I hope and I believe all of you are doing well. A uh, quick note whether the audio visual is all good. And uh, before we uh, start, let me tell you that I've shared the PDF for, of this uh, session uh, beforehand on the Telegram group uh, that is Dr. Nikita's Rad Synapse, or you can check the Telegram channel, Dr. Nikita Nanwani. So please grab that so that you can make notes, uh, you know, side by side as we discuss. Because in the PDF, you have the images only. It's all image concentrated PDF. And we need to identify, uh, okay, the various fractures. So we are going to quickly revise, the uh, target is like next 30 minutes or so, quickly revise the named fractures of the uh, upper limb, the lower limb, uh, the spine fractures, that is the vertebral fractures and the pelvis cave fractures. So we are quickly going to revise all of this. Most important here in the named fractures, Coley, Smith, Barton, these are very, very important. But we need to know all of them, right? We need to know all of them very, very well. So everybody, how's the Josh? Give me a quick thumbs up. All ready to discuss the uh, tricks and the mnemonics of the named fractures. There's a huge list there. So everybody, are you ready for it? What's the plan for the rest of the day? Let me tell you that as well. I've written in the pinned comment as well. So after this class at 10.30 a.m. for the Unacademy Plus subscribers, we will be discussing the PYQs of radiology. Okay, radiology PYQs is what we would be discussing. And then 5 p.m. Uh, we will have the free live class that is the special class on Unacademy app. And because our target for the day, the timetable that we are following for the revision for NEED PG. So ortho rapid revision, that is basically the binge last minute revision. Mixed back topics, the most important, which we tend to forget, which are very, very important that we are going to revise with the mnemonics, right? So very important. Uh, the link of this session is in the description of this video. So please enroll on that and use the code Dr. Nikita while you are enrolling if asked for a code. Okay. So uh, let's start with our name fractures. Most important, starting with the upper limb fractures. Okay, the name fractures of the upper limb. Anyone, so you have the PDF with you, everyone. Please make the notes side by side, whatever we are discussing, so that it's easy for you to revise later on. What do you think? What uh, fracture is this? Is it uh, Galliazzi? Is it Montegia? Is it SX low presti? It is, uh, uh, is it nightstick fracture? What is it? All right, so I see there's a lot of confusion here. Some of you saying, yeah, thank you, December, for that. So, Montegia hai ki galia zi hai. Very good. Uh, Duri uh, Ravi Shankar, this is the answer for this is night stick fracture. Okay, this is the night stick fracture. Why is this night stick, guys? Do not mark it as galia z or Montegia. What is a night stick fracture? Night stick fracture is basically isolated fracture of the ulna shaft. It is an isolated fracture of the ulna shaft without a displacement. Okay, there is no displacement, no dislocation of the joints. Galliazzi and Montegia, either radius or ulna, they have the associated radio ulna joint dislocation. Here there is no dislocation. Okay, here there is no dislocation. So what do we see in this image? Identify the bones. How do you identify which is radius, which is ulna? Look at the width of the bone. Look at this olecranon process that tells you this is ulna. Here you have the head of the radius. So this is the ulna fracture in the shaft and the joint dislocation is not there. There is no displacement. So remember this is night stick fracture, isolated fracture without any displacement. Clear with everyone? Now look at this one. What do you think is this fracture now? What do you think is this named fracture here? So what do we see here is, uh, this is the olecranon process. So this bone becomes ulna. This bone becomes radius. This is the head of the radius. The bone which is fractured, this is where we see the fracture. This is ulna fracture basically. But is there an associated dislocation? Yes, the radial head has dislocated. That means 
basically the proximal radio ulnar joint is dislocated so what is that ulna fracture with proximal radio ulnar joint dislocation or the radial head displacement that is montegia fracture right that is montegia fracture what is the trick to remember montegia and galeazzi remember murga right so m u r g so m is u and r is g that is montegia is ulna fracture and radius fracture is galeazzi okay and in that the dislocation that you have okay the dislocation that you have is when you write montegia okay when you write montegia it's n in a when you write galeazzi it has z in the end so when you say alphabets a b c d a comes proximally so this is proximal radio ulnar joint dislocation galeazzi ends in z it is distal radio ulnar joint dislocation okay so this is how you will remember montegia and galeazzi remember the two mnemonics that is the murga and ending in a and z proximal and distal okay now look at this one look at this image now what do we see here so again the wider bone here this is the radius you have the head of the radius this is the radius fracture and you can see the widening here in the distal radio ulnar joint so radius fracture with distal radio ulnar joint this is basically your galeazzi fracture okay this is the galeazzi fracture look at the image here look at the radius this distal fragment going here and you have the proximal fragment here so this is radius fracture with the distal radio ulnar joint dislocation so this is galeazzi fracture right from our mnemonic that is murga radius is galeazzi galeazzi ends in z it is your distal radio ulnar joint dislocation okay going to the next one now what is sx low presti fracture okay so as it's the twisted name okay remember sx low presti but i twisted naam hai sounds like a tongue twister the fracture is also like a twisted fracture a spiral sort of fracture which is going so the fracture basically starts here the radial fracture right you have the radial head fracture it involves the interosseous membrane that is ruptured and your distal radio ulnar joint also goes so basically it starts from the radius head goes down interosseous membrane is ruptured and the distal radio ulnar joint is dislocated okay so that is your sx low presti now in the elbow joint this has been asked in the fmg exam also identify the bone so this bone which you see here which does not have any process sort of thing that is the radius so you can see this radius head fracture and along with that here we see the distal radio ulnar joint the this uh, the mal alignment or the displacement okay so this is basically your sx low presti so remember low presti it is res is basically radius head fracture and then it goes down okay then it goes down and you have distal radio ulnar joint which is dislocated interosseous membrane is ruptured can someone tell me what is the similar sort of fracture uh, in the lower limb where you have a bone fracture it goes down below and then you have the other bone fracture distally what is the name of the fracture in the lower limb so you have the fibula proximal fibula which is fractured it goes in the interosseous membrane causes the ankle widening and there might be the tibial medial malleolus fracture as well what is this fracture that i am describing yes so look at this one this is what i was trying to tell you so you have tibia here you have fibula here fibula fracture interosseous membrane ankle widening right the ligament is torn along with that there might be medial malleolus fracture what fracture in the lower limb is this called as mesonevis fracture right do not go by the spelling mcqs mein to important nahi hai you have the mesonevis fracture which basically is similar to the sx low presti fracture okay so remember like you will remember this as mason mason matlab a laborer so which bone is fractured la that is the lateral bone is fractured that is the fibula is fractured so b is s b it sx low presti 
और बी इट मेसो नेवीज इट इज द लैटरल बोन विच इज फ्रैक्चर्ड अपर लिम में द लैटरल बोन इज रेडियस लोअर लिम में द लैटरल बोन इज फेबुलर ओके रिमेंबर दैट गोइंग टू दिस वन टेल मी वट फ्रैक्चर इज दिस दर्स है so that's the same fracture that we were talking about look at the image the slender bone this is fibula you see the fracture in the fibula and the wider bone is the tibia and you have this tibial malleolus fracture so proximal fibula with tibial malleolus distal fracture that is your meso nevis fracture okay that is your meso nevis fracture all right let's come to this one very very important the most important where we generally tend to get confused smiths colies and bartons okay smiths colies and bartons so most important tell me out of this which is the intra articular fracture we are just talking about these three smith colies and barton so remember articular intra articular a r t that is your barton okay so barton is intra articular right that means it involves the articular surface this is all the radius fracture the distal radius fractures after that button could be volar button dorsal button theek hai smith fracture and colies fracture remember c ke baad alphabetically you have d so colies has dorsal displacement dorsal angulation s t u v when you say the alphabets smith fracture is your volar angulation so these are extra articular you can see this the fracture here it is not involving the articular surface colies the fracture here not involving the articular surface bartons this is the articular surface the fracture line is going till there okay so remember that bartons is intra articular colies is dorsal and smith is volar now what is hutchison's fracture Hutchison's fracture, the wider bone radius, the styloid process again intra-articular, the styloid process fracture, radial styloid process fracture, Hutchison fracture also called as the Schaffer's fracture. I'll show you the other images also. Now look at this one. Ki uh, what is this? Radiologically on the radiographs, how do you identify whether this is Colies or this is Smith or it is Barton? first this is an image that comes very frequently in the exam that is your dinner fork deformity you can see the dorsal angulation basically so dorsal tells you clinically that it is colies c and d radiologically look at the palm okay the metacarpals the palm mein jo metacarpals dikhenge in the x ray they have a concave surface on the palmar aspect so if you see that the flexor fragment is going towards the concavity that means it is volar angulation if it is going towards the convexity that means it is dorsal so this one the angulation that you see here look at the angulation the concavity is here i'll show you other image as well the concavity is here you can see the angulation like this going opposite it is not going like this so this is dorsal angulation okay so this is dorsal angulation look at this one what do you think is this fracture what do you think is this fracture so again the distal radius not intra articular but look at the look at the angulation how is the angulation towards the palm right towards the palm that is volar angulation this is extra articular not intra articular so this becomes your smith fracture okay this becomes your smith fracture all right now look at the image here schematic image again extra articular fracture going like this towards the concavity that is your smith look at the fracture here this is basically your concavity of the bones that you are seeing here okay so this is your volar angulation you can see the fracture line here in the radius extra articular this is the smith fracture so basically to differentiate smith versus colies we need a lateral x ray because to see whether it is dorsal or it is volar we need to have a lateral x ray okay we need to have a lateral x ray all right look at this one what do you think is this fracture here 
what do you think is this fracture here so you can see the bone fracture involving the articular surface so this is intra articular so this is bartens okay so this is bartens now here look at along with the fracture fragment okay this is the fracture fragment along with the fracture fragment you have the carpal bone going with it along with the fracture fragment you have the carpal bone getting displaced with it so that is what is your bartens fracture okay intra articular fracture dorsal and volar okay dorsal and volar the carpal bone it is your radius along with the carpal bone getting displaced with it it could be dorsal it could be volar all right now now that we have discussed everything look at the image here and tell me what do you think is this is this smith is this colis or it is barton this image is a good image to identify the fracture is it smith colis or barton what do you think is it smith is it colis or it is bartens what do you think is this fracture here right very good i see almost all of you getting this right absolutely correct so look at the fracture line here this is the fracture line not involving the articular surface fracture line here not involving the articular surface so uh this is not bartens so it is smith or colis extra articular distal radius now look at the angulation the bone is going like this look at the concavity that is the palmar surface so you know that this is going towards the palm the concave surface of the metacarpals helps you identify that so this is absolutely right guys so you've got it right that is smith fracture okay this one is smith fracture extra articular with volar angulation absolutely right i'm happy to see all the answers here okay now look at this one what do you see here so basically we have shown here the shoffer pehle ke zamane mein jo shoffer hote the to start the engine they used to rotate this and that lead you know that leads to the radial styloid process fracture which is called as shoffer's fracture or hutchison fracture so imagine there is a person called hachison this person's name is hachison imagine like that and he is a shoffer okay so look at the image here so again the wider bone that is the radius this is the ulna look at the fracture line in the radial styloid process the fracture line in the radial styloid process okay so intra articular radial styloid fracture that is shoffer's or hachison's fracture okay let's go to this one what do you think is this fracture here again this is your hutchison's fracture the radial styloid fracture okay tell me identify this image what do you think is uh, this fracture here look at this image what do you think is this fracture so you can see the fracture here at the base of the thumb the fracture is here at the base so again is it bennett or it is rolando is it bennett or it is rolando what is the difference between the two so basically remember that the base of the thumb the fractures that we have it is your bennett fracture and you have the rolando fracture okay the bennett and the rolando fracture now bennett is your ima imagine bennett is your bi that means a routine fracture it is not a comminuted fracture you have just a fracture in the bone dividing the bone into two fragments rolando is your comminuted fracture that is what is the difference you can remember this as rolando uh, right the football player rolando standing like this okay these are the legs standing like this in this position so you have basically the y shape okay so the y shape the y shape 
or the VT shape that is basically your Rolando. So look at this one. This is the Y shape that you are getting here. This is Rolando standing like this. What do you see here as well? Look at the fracture. You have the Y shape here, right? This is the Y shape here. This is comminuted fracture, base of the thumb. This is Rolando. Okay, this is Rolando. Is this clear with everyone? Rolando is comminuted fracture. Okay, it is comminuted Y or T shape. And please do not confuse Bennett's fracture with the Barton fracture. Remember in Barton, you have R. So it is radius fracture. Bennett ending in double T, it is your thumb base fracture. Okay, so Bennett is thumb base, Barton is radius. Okay, so do not confuse into two uh, options. Next one, what are we seeing here in this image? What are we seeing here in this image? Anyone? Now look at this fracture here. Can you see this fracture here at the base of the thumb? This is just two segment, two fragment here, simple one. So this is your Bennett fracture. Okay, this one is your Bennett, right? This one is your Bennett. Rolando's is comminuted. Bennett's is not comminuted. Okay, the base thumb. Remember this for your exam at least important. What is this one here? Look at the fracture, look at the boxer, right? So when someone is doing a boxing and there would be a fracture here, fifth metacarpal neck. Okay, so the fifth metacarpal neck fracture, that is what you are seeing here. This is a fifth metacarpal neck getting fracture. This is boxer's fracture. Okay, this is your boxer's fracture, which is your fifth metacarpal neck fracture. Okay, the fifth metacarpal neck fracture. Okay, so always remember like this, boxing ke time, yaha pe injury ho rahi hai. Okay, so fifth metacarpal neck. Similarly, in the lower limb, you have the fifth metatarsal fracture. Right, this is the fifth metatarsal on the lateral side. You see the fracture here. Upper limb mein it is boxer. Lower limb mein it is Jones fracture. Okay, so this one is your Jones fracture. So this is the fifth metatarsal. Jones is your fifth metatarsal. All right. So that was about the upper limb fractures. Usme humne ek do lower limb fractures discuss kiye hain. The one that we discussed is your uh, Masonevi's fracture, the fibula, interosseous membrane, ankle widening, tibia, comedial malleolus, and we discussed the Jones fracture, right? Along with that, we have discussed. What did we say? Masonevi's is similar to SX low presti of the upper limb. Jones is like similar to the boxer's fracture in the upper limb. Everybody, so are we clear with the upper limb fractures, the named fractures? Coley's, Smith, Barton, Bennett's, Rolando's, Galliazzi, Montegia, Nightstick, right? All of them. Okay, let's go now to the lower limb fractures. Okay, the lower limb fractures. This is the huge list that we have here for the lower limb. Let's jump quickly, then we will see the images also. Okay. So, focusing on the important ones that we have here, all of you have the PDF. Bumper fracture, I'll show you the image of the bumper fracture. See, when you are walking along a road, imagine there's a car which comes, the bumper hits on the side. So, it is the lateral side which gets affected, right? A person walking and it would be the lateral side which is affected. So, it is lateral condyle of tibia, okay, lateral condyle of tibia. The next one, pehle mein important important karim, fir amman baaki bhi dekhenge. Pots fracture and cottons fracture. Pots is a bimalleolar, cottons is trimalleolar. So remember pots, you can spell it like bots and this is cottons. So pots or bots, B is the second alphabet. So it is a bimalleolar and cottons is C, that is your third that means it is trimalleolar. So, know that the mallet and the jersey, those the tendon injuries, these are not the bony fractures. So, that I'll discuss in the 5 p.m. class today, the Unacademy Free Life class. Okay. So, remember, cotton is trimalleolar and pots is bimalleolar. What is aviator fracture? Remember, your aviator is your tenless fracture. Anyone, what sign do we see? To look for whether it is going to go into AVN or not. 
because tendon scuff fracture it is predisposed to undergo your avascular necrosis of the bone that's a complication talus ho gaya scaphoid ho gaya these are the common bones you know which undergo avn so there is basically your hopkins sign right the hopkins sign is what we see you have the radiolucency subchondral that tells you that the blood supply is good i think i've discussed that in one of the classes okay so hopkins sign so remember hopkins hawk is a bird aviator is like a bird all of these are related to talus okay all of this are related to talus then you have your jones fracture we already saw the fifth metatarsal base that is the jones fracture march fracture when someone is marching a lot leading to the stress on the foot bones so it leads to the fracture of the second or third metatarsal that is the march fracture Topats, Lisprand, Talons, Talox, Runners, all of this we are going to see in the images. ठीक है? चलो एक-एक स्टार्ट करते हैं. Look at the image A and look at the image B. These are two different images. Tell me what fracture are you seeing in the image A? What fracture are you seeing in the image A? Now, how do you identify the tarsal bones? The recent FMG exam had a question on that. Uh, you know, identifying navicular bones. So, let me quickly tell you that. See, when you have the ankle joint here, this is tibia, this is fibula. The tarsal bone which participates in the ankle joint is talus. Absolutely right. The one which forms the heel is the calcaneum. So, you see the talus fracture here. In this one, you see the talus fracture here. So talus fracture is aviator fracture, right? So this is aviator. Talo calcaneo navicular, right? So this is the talus, and this is the navicular bone here. This entire thing is talus here, right? This entire thing is talus here. This is the navicular bone, and this is the calcaneum. This is your talo calcaneo navicular joint. Okay, so that is what type of joint? Ball and socket type of joint, right? Ball and socket. So the question was asked on identifying the navicular. Now look at this. What fracture are we seeing here? This is calcaneal fracture. Tell me what is calcaneal? There's an interesting mnemonic to that. Very very interesting. I think this is the best part of the today's discussion that we have. So imagine. Okay. So this is basically. Can someone identify who are these? Who is this cricketer or who is this anyone? Can you identify that? If not ortho named fracture answers, let's answer this. Everyone, who have been depicted in this uh, drawing? Yes, you know. So this is a lovely drawing made by uh, one of my dear students. Absolutely. So you have Virat here and you have Anushka here. So Virat is doing bowling, right? कैसे करते हैं बॉलिंग पहले बॉल घिसते हैं घिसना राइट यू हैव घिसना देन यू हैव द बॉलिंग बीइंग डन ही पुट्स अ बॉल इन सच अ वे कि एक क्रिकेटर टॉप बैट्समैन का विकेट गिर जाता है एंड अनुष्का बिकम्स वेरी वेरी हैप्पी एंड आउट ऑफ द एक्साइटमेंट शी जंप्स ऑन टू द ग्राउंड एंड शी गेट्स अ फ्रैक्चर द कैल्केनियल फ्रैक्चर ओके एंड शी गेट्स द कैल्केनियल फ्रैक्चर सो बेसिकली द निमोनिक हियर इज Ball gisna that is your uh, gisane's angle. Okay, so yes, gisane's angle. Bowler is your bowler's angle. Okay, and this is the lover of Virat Anushka. Lover's fracture that is she gets the calcaneal fracture, which is also called as the lover's fracture. Okay, so remember in calcaneal fracture the angles which are measured are gisane's and bowler's. a uh, calcaneal fracture is also known as a lover's fracture and also remember here that what is the difference between bowler's and gisane's one decreases and one increases in the calcaneal fracture bowler's angle decreases gisane's angle increases okay so bowler's decreases and gisane's increases so as i said yes this has been made by one of the students so if any one of you have this creativity in you you know the drawing is your passion 
uh, do let me know we can get such uh, you know the creative mnemonics made together yes so this is your uh, calcaneal okay the lover's fracture remember anushka jumping and give, getting calcaneal fracture gesanes and bowler okay so that is about your calcaneal fracture look at this one what fracture is this see so this is the bumper hitting the lateral side of the leg here so in this image you can see that uh, the nika this is the femur you have the patella this is tibia and this is fibula the fracture on the lateral side how do i know this is the lateral side because it is close to the fibula fibula is on the lateral side right so this is a lateral tibial plateau fracture the lateral tibial condyle uh, so that is basically your bumper's fracture absolutely right so this is your bumper's fracture the lateral proximal tibia fracture okay now look at this one very very important okay you get a associated question on this anyone do you see anything here this is a small fragment of bone that you see here medial side or lateral side on the fibula side so this is the lateral side so this is a small avulsion fracture on the lateral tibial plateau here the lateral tibial condyle small avulsion fracture this is called as this is called as sigon's fracture okay this is called as sigon's fracture the lateral tibia avulsion fracture very good nikunj and always you should remember that when you see sigon's fracture it has a high association with acl injury right you should always check for acl so mri would help in that case to look for acl tear okay it is highly associated with acl tear okay next one what do you think is this this is a isolated fracture of the fibula okay the isolated fibula fracture that is your runners okay that is your runners fracture so imagine that if you have a feeble person you know who suddenly starts running you know out of the blue i uh, i uh, tell myself okay, i want to go for a marathon and i want to run and i've never exercised never gone to the gym not done nothing so feeble physically if i run i will get runners fracture so remember runners fracture feeble is your fibula fracture okay your fibula fracture like you had the isolated ulna fracture ulna shaft fracture in the upper limb that was your night stick fracture this is your runners fracture isolated isolated fibula fracture okay this one what do you think is this fracture here so basically the intra articular tibial fracture you know so imagine like you have those uh, kya bolte hain usko jisme hum kootte hain so you know the tibia is uh, the pestle and motor right the pestle and motor basically so tibia going into the ankle joint leading to the distal tibia fracture so that distal tibia fracture intra articular that is your pillons fracture okay that is your pillons fracture so remember pillons i n is intra articular fracture of the distal tibia what is tillox i'll come to the uh, tillox fracture as well what fractures are this you see the fibula ka fracture lateral malleolus you see the medial malleolus both are going so this is bimalleolar fracture this is pots right this is pots bots we said it is pots here also you have the lateral malleolus you have the medial malleolus and you see here posteriorly you have the another fracture so this becomes your trimalleolar third alphabet c tri that is your cotton's fracture so remember pots and cottons bimalleolar trimalleolar what is this fracture here second metatarsal classical you see this callus formation this is basically the stress fracture second metatarsal commonly involved this is march fracture right the march fracture second metatarsal neck is very commonly involved okay uh, what do we see here what is the lis frank fracture dislocation 
Is it sudden disturbance in the mic sound or it's there since long? I think because of the background work going on around, uh, the construction work, maybe that might be affecting. Okay, so what is a Lisfranc fracture dislocation? So if you know what is Lisfranc, you'll be able to understand this. So what is basically a Lisfranc fragment? So we have the medial cuneiform here, right? The medial intermediate lateral, the medial uh, cuneiform, okay? Usme kya hota hai? Our third malleolus in the trimalleolar is your posterior tibial tubercle. Okay, so you will be able to see only in the lateral view. The posterior one that you see, the posterior tibial tubercle, that is what? Okay. Since long. Okay. Um, I'll give me a minute. Let me check if I can resolve that. Everyone, am I audible and visible? All right, let's quickly see this. Uh, the left prank of fracture dislocation, what do we have? So left prank segment is the one which connects your medial cuneiform with the second metatarsal base. Okay, this is what is the left prank. Okay. Okay. <laughs> good one, good solution, Thomas there. So, if there is an injury, ho gaya, that gets torn like you see here. So, these metatarsals will, will get unstable and they can separate away. So, that is what is your list frank. So, in list frank, basically that is what we said here. Ki second metatarsal base to the medial cuneiform, this is gone. So, you will see that this gets uh, uh, unstable and it can cause to divergent type. Okay, you have different types, homolateral, that means all the metatarsals going together, divergent, the four going separately, it could be non-displaced. Okay, so that is your list frank. Okay, that is your list frank. So look at this one. Will you be able to identify that this is the list frank fracture here basically? Look at how the, there is a widening in the first and the second because the list frank fragment which was there that is torn leading to the separation. Okay, leading to the separation. So this is basically at your tarso metatarsal. Okay, that is your tarso metatarsal joint. That is your list frank amputation. Bhi waisa hota hai, hai na? Look at this. What is this one? This is the talus bone, this is calcaneum, this is navicular, this is cuboid. So you see that the talo navicular, yahan pe ja raha hai, gap a raha hai, calcaneo cuboid, yahan pe gap a raha hai. So this is basically your chopaz fracture dislocation. Okay, the chopaz fracture dislocation. Uh, so remember, chopaz and list frank, even in the amputations. C comes before. L comes later, distal. So proximal wala cho part hai, that is your uh, mid tarsal there and you have the list frank at tarso metatarsal. Okay, so cho part, yane kafi bada yaan pe hai, you have that these tarsal bones also getting separated. So remember it is talonavicular and calcanocuboid, these are getting separated from each other. So that is cho parts. I remember it as T and C, C. Imagine like my college, the MD radiology college, that is T and M C. May there was a co PG with me whose name was Dr. Chopra. Okay, so T and M C may Dr. Chopra. That is T and C C. Talonavicular calcanocuboid gone. That is Chopards. Okay, that is Chopards. All right. Next one, let us see the next one here. Right. Now, this is what is your tillox fracture, like someone was mentioning. So, remember tillox fracture may, it is TI, so there is your tibia cuff fracture, right? You have the tibia cuff fracture. Tibia fracture because basically this pull on the ATFL, okay, the ATFL, uh, that pulls the tibia along with it. Let me show you this in the images. Look at the CT image. This is your tibia on the lateral side. This is the tibia. This is the fibula. The distal lateral tibial fracture getting pulled by the ATFL. That is basically your tillox fracture. So let me go back to the list here. Okay. So look at this. Tillox is your avulsion fracture of the tibia by the ATFL. So like we saw in that image. Right, like we saw in this image, the ATFL causes a pull, that is the avulsion of the distal tibia, right? So remember, tillox tibia, tibia gets tilted distally because of the ATFL pull, okay?
is it okay now i think uh, so what we have remaining are just the few fractures so upper limb is done lower limb is done we have the vertebral fractures uh, and we have the two pelvis fractures the straddle and the malgegnies fracture so i'll continue this we'll pause here for now because as i said I have another class to start soon need to do some preparation for that as well so we will continue this in the 5 pm class the remaining spinal fract the vertebral fractures jefferson's hangman's clay shovelers burst fracture chance fracture all right and in the pelvis the malgegnies and the straddle fracture so that we are uh, going to do in the 5 pm class the link of that you can find in the description of this video right it's a free live class guys all of you can attend that on the unacademy app you can use code dr nikita if asked for it the unacademy plus subscribers you can join me at 10:30 am for the radiology pyqs discussion okay so that was uh, about uh, this upper limb and lower limb your homework is to make a consolidated list and uh, share it on the telegram group i want to see who does your homework very uh, you know sincerely and do it creatively as well maybe you can just take a image of the upper limb and you can mark all the fractures where all you see the fractures right ki sx low presti idhar hoga fir galiazi idhar hoga ulna ka fracture night stick montegia try and consolidate it in one image and uh, i would be glad to see it you doing your homework and sharing it on the group as well okay so pilon and tilox ka fracture ka difference hai pilon is generally comminuted fracture it is like upward jab force aata hai to pura tibia distal jab fracture ho jayega yahan pe jo fracture ho raha hai it's only the small avulsion fracture the small avulsion fracture pilons will intact right in the middle the intra articular fracture it would be comminuted as well let's see the list here that will define so it is your comminuted intra articular fracture of the distal end okay is it clear so amputation so in the ortho class today uh, i will include your uh, amputation ke mnemonics right many of us find that difficult the remaining of the named fractures we will have the various angles that are used the various classification that is used in orthopedics if there is anything else that you remember and particularly you want me to include in the 5 pm class right the bone tumors a quick review of the bone tumors uh, also we will do right this is at least the what is there on my mind so we will do that in the 5 pm class all right ha huh, thank you so we have the cast and the splints also to be discussed let's see how much of that we can uh, discuss in the today's class all right so uh, thank you so much everyone for joining for this one i'll see you again at 10:30 am an academy plus 5 pm an academy free class and what's the plan for tomorrow yes what's the plan for 9 am tomorrow 3rd february the target is ent a slight change in the pattern let's have the early morning quiz itself so the tomorrow's youtube live session would be a live quiz i am planning to experiment something new let's see how that works i am hoping you all will enjoy that and it would be a good revision so you will have mixed bag mcqs from ent along with the tricks on how to remember the important volatile points in ent all right so thank you so much everyone goodbye take care and keep studying keep revising and 